On today's show, the guys welcome Brian Collins, former Walt Disney World Imagineer and educator. There's an East update. The guys got some banter between them. There's that and so much more up next on EduTech Guys. Yeah. You're listening to the EduTech Guys, edutechguys.com. Hello and welcome to this episode of EduTech Guys. I'm David Henderson. Hey, I'm Jeff Madlock. Yeah, hey, welcome to the show. Thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in, turning us on. Oh. Wait, that, that didn't come out right. Ooh la la. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. What, what do you say for podcast? I mean, it's not like you're tuning in. I don't know. Thanks for downloading the episode. Popping the app. I don't, know. The app. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Thanks for downloading the episode. Downloading us. <laughs> downloading us. Thanks for downloading I us. Anyway. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, remember, you can always catch us online. Just go to Google, type in Edutech Guys, and you're going to find us. And don't forget to get us on Twitter because that's where we hang out and we lurk most of the time. But, you know, actually, Instagram has become one of my new favorite hangouts. It has, yes. So um, I'm trying to take some lessons I learned from the Monica Burns and, you know, uh, the Dave Burgess and yeah. that whole crew. They're, they're all over Instagram, like, you know, stories and graphics and pictures and live talking Live talking. Like the live picture shows. I was live talking. Oh, wait, that was Jive talking. Turning me on. Oh, there we go. We said it again now. This is the turn on <laughs> podcast awesome. episode for the Edge of Tech Guys. So really, what go to the website, www.edgetechguys.com. Drop down at the bottom of the page. You'll find a contact form there. You can get in touch with us. Tell us you want to be on the show and you want to talk about education, or yeah, that's technology, right. or you know, um, raising cattle. We don't care. We'll talk to you about it. We, we can talk about raising cattle. Can we? Yeah. Raisin cattle. They're tiny little with little legs. Little raisin little cattle? Raisin cattle. That was a, that, I did that in Cub Scouts. It was a, it was a craft exercise. <laughs> raisin cattle. <laughs> yep. Then we painted some, it was like a macaroni Then we necklace. painted some pecans orange and made them look like little watermelons and put them on a rock. It said Hope, Arkansas. Because you know, for a Hope <laughs> That's right, watermelon. Yeah. The watermelon festival. And there's the craft section of EduTech Guys <laughs> That's for right. today. That's right. That's, that's that, that was the maker. That was the maker portion. You know what I said? I, I wonder how many crafts, I mean, does, I, there's the thing, in this day and age in STEM and STEAM and all of our maker spaces, do kids even make stuff out of pipe cleaners anymore? What's happened to the pipe cleaning what industry? What happened to the pipe cleaning industry? The pipe cleaner industry of, you know, I bet you can't even get multicolored pipe cleaners anymore. You can probably, you know, if you could even find a pipe cleaner anymore. I, I, I don't bet you know. that they only make pipe cleaners for crafts at this point. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm sure you're right. And they probably don't even call them pipe cleaners There's anymore. There's probably an app to clean your pipe. <laughs> I, I have no Boy, idea. Boy, this one just like, this choo-choo wing, choo-choo-choo right off the rails. Right off the rails. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? We love making the show, and we love visiting with educators and hearing their stories at events across the nation. You can help us continue spreading the love by sponsoring either the show, the conference, appear the, the conference appearances, or both. Hit us up at edutechguys.com slash sponsors to find out how you can help keep the Edutech Guys train rolling. Speaking of going off the rails. <laughs> you can also get your uh, name or company in markets that you may not currently occupy. That's exactly right. May not currently occupy. Because we're everywhere. Everywhere. We're everywhere. I'm trying to work a deal for a sign on the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> Just a giant sign. With our picture on it. Listen, we've had a lot of wrecks here at this section. <laughs> <laughs> people and people we, trying to flip a U-turn and go the other way. people and their faces are frozen in <laughs> yeah. fear and fright because they saw your giant <laughs> mugs on the on the side of the road there. That's right. We're, Boy, we're, okay, new rule: no unsweet tea with caffeine for lunch. Okay, because we just it's just it's it hit me hard. <laughs> Going off the rails of the crazy train. You know it's interesting. So you know, talking about that, getting your into a market you haven't seen. Let's talk about Concordia University and yeah. what they're offering. So you know, I've been in education for. a a long time now. I've been in this for several years, over 25 years, and I've seen the challenges some students have to face every day, whether it's going to school hungry or not being able to see a doctor when they're sick. These challenges make it hard for kids to focus on learning. Well, thankfully, Concordia University in Portland is leading the way with their three to PhD program that helps to combat students' fears, freeing them to pursue their highest dreams. They're revolutionizing education by creating a holistic model. It provides groceries, healthcare, and 
and even clothing to students right there on campus, helping them thrive and helping our communities strengthen and grow. You know, Concordia's College of Education offers online and on-campus programs where students have the opportunity to learn about a more compassionate approach to education and to see how nurturing the whole student can lead to amazing things. Yeah, hey, to learn more about how you could help students conquer their monsters and achieve their highest dreams, visit cu-portland.edu slash let's conquer. Hashtag nurture, educate, grow. Hey, welcome back to the EduTech Guys. We're really excited to have our next guest on the show. After several flip-flops and scheduling mishaps, mainly with us, <laughs> That's uh, right. we finally have him on the show. We've been looking yeah. forward to this. You heard a little bit from him back when we were at FETC because we did a live uh, broadcast from there real quick in a workshop, and we had a very short amount of time. And he's got so much to share. We're glad he's on the show. We're going to let him tell us who he is and where he's from and all that kind of good stuff. So here we go. So for all your listeners out there, uh, to introduce myself, my name's Brian Collins. I'm a former Walt Disney Imagineer, um, but I also have a background in education and in innovative technology. So I kind of combine all that stuff together and work now as an innovation consultant. And um, I'd love to talk to you guys a little bit more about some of the trends out there and what I see coming down the road. Yeah. Well, that's what I, I'm kind of interested in. So what are you seeing now before we get to what's coming down the road? What are you seeing kind of what's the hot thing now that you're as folks are working with you in terms of technology, innovation, especially in education? What are some of the things that they're bringing up to you and le- that you're lending your expertise in the education yeah. arena? You know, when we were at the um, FETC conference, which is where I first met you guys, Mm -hmm. um, one of the hot things that I saw out there that was being um, experimented with a lot in education, and I see it when I go to conferences as well, is the use of augmented reality Mm -hmm. for teaching. Um, I'm seeing a lot of really innovative ways, and right now, um, like the Merge Cube seems to be really popular in classrooms, and and I'm actually working with uh, some potential clients right now about how to take that um, augmented reality and, and kind of integrate it into uh, education in some new and exciting ways. That's really yeah, cool. That's really cool. So, okay, yeah. so th- there's the big one. So with your background, you know, you can bring a lot into it, especially in with uh, yeah. theme parks and entertainment industry. Right. Right. So right. And AR and VR is a big deal. So what's coming down the road? What do you see being the big thing for education? Um, I think one of the next things, I think um, you're going to start seeing a lot of more innovative uses of augmented reality, but I think kind of combining that with um, artificial intelligence that's Mm -hmm. out there, you know, people are speaking to Siri now, they're speaking, you know, to their phones, um, and voice recognition um, has really kind of evolved to a really kind of a cool place now, Um, so I think you're going to kind of start seeing that being used a lot more in the classrooms. Um, kids now just kind of grow up. They're growing up using it. It's very natural to them. So it kind of makes you wonder if uh, keyboards are going to be around in right. a few years. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, in my house, I use Siri. I use uh, Alexa and Google most of the time. It seems like to, yeah. turn, to yeah. turn on everything. Well, you know, it's interesting. So y- your background in just from Disney alone being an Imagineer, right. you guys saw AI as being the future of everything a long time ago, didn't you? Um, yeah, to some extent. Um, I mean, Imagineering has always kind of been on the curve, you mm-hmm. know, the, 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 the leading edge of trying to see what's out there that's new and exciting and emerging tech and looking at how we can integrate that into education or I'm sorry, into entertainment. And yeah. one of the things that was apparent to me even back then is that you know, to cross pollinate that technology into education or into the corporate world or, or, you know, just in other ways that it hasn't been done um, was very apparent to me. And, and, you know, that's something that's always kind of captured my imagination. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a lot of times now when I go out to um, conferences and I do workshops for school districts and things like that, I'm talking about kind of how to think like an Imagineer and how to bring those Imagineering insights in, in uh, thinking styles into the classroom 
Right. Well, you know, I think that's the thing, and, and I want our listeners to know that that we're, we're talking about ed tech. But I'm I'm a huge fan of Disney. First time I went was 1979 yeah. at Walt, Walt Disney World, and they need to understand that Imagineers is not just about tech. It's about design thinking. It's about right. Fix, exactly. It's about give me a problem, and we're going to come up with the coolest, most imaginative way to fit to, to fix that problem. And and that's exactly. exactly what we're looking for. In we're looking for workflow processes. That's what we're trying to teach our kids to do. So that's what you spend a lot of your time doing. It is. It is. And, you know, I mean, one, one of the cooler projects I've worked on that kind of combines it tech with my Imagineering design thinking, if you will, was um, I've, I've been working with a uh, instructor over in England, of all places, who works with kids who are um, actually they're young adults, but they're on the autism spectrum. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to create a sensory room over there. So for the last, I would say, well over a year now, he and I have been collaborating. He'll come over here to the States maybe about three times a year. And we'll walk through Disney and I'll kind of show him some insights about how Disney uses technology and uses sights and sounds and smells and lighting and all that stuff to kind of create an immersive environment. And then he's taken that back and created this amazing sensory room over there for uh, the, the young adults to kind of go in and where they can kind of decompress and chill out if they need to. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, the thing, the thing I love about it is that he's got no money, yeah. you know, and, and that's just like the teachers, you know, that I speak to all the time over here is that teachers usually don't have budgets. Mm-hmm. And when I first go in there and I start talking about design thinking and putting technology into your classroom, the first thing, you know, that their their knee jerk reaction is, well, we don't have the money to do that. Right. And I show them how you can do that with very low money, if you know, and sometimes for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. A lot of it is the it's the mindset. It, it's not the yeah. it's not the stuff. I mean, yeah, you got to have stuff. Right. But by the same token, you know, taking. And, and I would imagine in, in many cases, it's taking the stuff you already have and just right. reimagining what you can do with it. I, I think you, you touched on a very key aspect that I think a lot of people miss, not just um, uh, at Disney, but just uh, kind of in life in general, but certainly in the classroom. <laughs> and that is the the whole the, the sensory experience and and yeah. how. Um, uh, how, uh, oh, crud, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, how purposeful that is, how intentional, that's the word I'm looking for, yeah. how intentional those sensory experiences are. Um, yeah. and, and I think that's one of the things that, you know, you're able to share with folks that they may not even realize that that they're being exposed to it. You know, when you kind of pull that curtain back and they go, well, oh, oh, that's why they did, ah. Exactly. And, and a lot of teachers already kind of tap into that without knowing it. I mean, it's not unusual for example, for teachers to play music when kids are coming into the classroom. Right. And I try and get them to think about how they can use audio, you know, a step further. It's not just music, but maybe sound effects or maybe, you know, narrations or things like that nature. So, you know, I try, try to get them to kind of expand their mind. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. if, If you will. Yeah. Well, and it's, and it's, and it's, you know, it, it's the sounds, it's, you know, it's the smells, you know, uh, I know a right. lot of teachers who they've got various plug-in devices or whatever that put out a particular, you know, aroma and, you know, right. a lot of times they don't really think about it. They just, yeah, I'm today, you know, I've, I've got vanilla in there and I'm going to use vanilla until I'm out of vanilla. But, right. you know, if you make that conscious effort and that intentional use of right. those particular aromas that could tie in somehow or another, you know, mm-hmm. to the various lessons you're giving or what right. have you, you start to open up that that sensory right. perspective from the students. Right, right. You know, especially like when you start talking about like um, brain signs, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's proven that scents are a very good way to lock in a memory and, and help with learning. You know, it's like, every one of us can probably go back to our grandmother's house right. and, you know, you walk into, sometimes you're walking, you know, into a restaurant and you all smell something cooking and all of a sudden, boom, you're right back there. And yeah. it's triggered that memory and sense in the classroom could do the same kind of thing. Lighting in the classroom mm-hmm. can do the same kind of thing. Audio. I mean, so there are all these imagineering techniques that, like you said, if you're purposeful with them and you put a little thought and creativity and innovation into it, you can really do some amazing things. And, you know, that kind of 
you know, takes me, I guess, to, to what I was saying before about using the new technology that's coming out, augmented reality and, and um, artificial intelligence and things of that nature. You know, it, it's just different tools, but finding ways to um, use them in the classroom to trigger the best experience, learning experience for the kids. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, yeah. when, when we were at the, uh, the, here in Arkansas, we have a program called East, uh, and, and it's, it's basically, it's, it's problem, ba- problem solving based learning that the students come up with a project. And, and one of the group of students, uh, they, they are actually working with augmented slash virtual reality to help yeah. students who have, uh, fine motor skill problems. And it's that yeah. same kind of, you know, working with them that, yes, they got the goggles on, they can see the real world through those, but then they right. also are manipulating these virtual, you know, images. And I think it'd be awesome to have them extend that further into exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Let's right. add some of those other senses in there and help connect all these dots into their right. learning. Yeah. And, and yeah. That's, that's, you know, I was going to say, so, with your very backgrounds, because you've done a little bit of everything and you know a lot, you work with a lot of different companies across a broad yeah. spectrum. What's yeah. that like going into a school district when you get to when you get to come in with that Swiss Army knife yeah. of, of tools? <laughs> yeah. For you, does it does it? I just want to get your experience with that. Is it like just like the biggest hoot in the world because you get to come in and I guess your brain never stops because you get, you get a new problem with a new set of, of educators or students. And then you get to take this wealth of knowledge and maybe start applying it to like, there's several things on my Swiss Army I've never opened, but you know, right. <laughs> do, do you right. find yourself doing that a lot? Um, I'd like to be doing more of it. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's really fun. Most of what I've had the chance to do to this point has been to present more at conferences and workshops mm-hmm. and talk to administrators and educators in, in that environment, as opposed to being brought into a school district mm-hmm. to sure. kind of solve a problem. Right. Um, like I say, you know, I'd love to, to, to do more of that, but it's been, it's been great when I do get out and speak to them because a lot of times it's kind of, getting them to open their eyes. You know, every mm-hmm. one of us, you know, we go into our job and we do our work and sometimes we get so focused and, you know, we're kind of within our own paradigm of how we do our work and what education should be. So, um, you know, be, being a former Imagineer, I guess that kind of is a hook and people understand what that means. But being able to combine that, you know, at one point I worked for the Florida Virtual School as an innovation specialist. Uh-huh. And my job was to go out and find new and emerging technologies, kind of what we're talking about here, yeah, and yeah. figure out how to cross-pollinate those into education. Um, so, you know, when they find out that I kind of get that part of it too, um, they're really intrigued. And, and I find them very um, open-minded, to be honest. Right. Um, it's, you know, I, I think a lot of times it's, you know, te- teachers and educators can be very, very creative people um, in, in a lot of ways. Um, but I think what they like about me is that I kind of bring a little bit different perspective to it mm-hmm. and, and kind of am able to get them to kind of unlock their, their brain um, and step outside the education world and look at the bigger more holistic picture. Yeah, I, and, so, I, and I figured that's what you were going to say because you know you've you you're dealing with a much larger picture, especially you know yeah. just the Florida virtual school alone. You know, Florida's a large state, and you deal with a yeah. lot of different people. But yeah, you know that's that's what I was figuring, and you know, but it's right. You've actually done the front end legwork already because the people you have to convince first are those administrators and those people at workshops and things right. like, and conferences. So let me yeah. let's talk about this though. So let's talk about uh, WD with me. So let's talk, uh-huh. let's talk about that because I mean that's a really big deal and that's uh, a okay. Dr. Howie. That's how we kind of you know got to know you. Yeah, yeah. And, uh-huh. and Dr. Howie loves that because he's right. Just what you were talking about earlier, taking those people through you know the park. So that's a really big deal. Yeah, um, Howie and I have have we've known each other now for several years. Yeah, and uh, he's been great to collaborate with. And we're actually working right now on putting together a professional development. Um, uh, week 
Um, and it's actually a combination of online stuff where uh, teachers can sign up. They, they do the online courses and then they come to Orlando for a week and we spend several days in the Disney theme parks. And it's, you know, it sounds like a lot of fun and it is a lot of fun, yeah. but it's really more about um, how, how do we help those educators kind of connect the dots and the teachers kind of look and see how Disney has done things. So one of the things that, you know, not necessarily tech oriented, but just as an example is that we'll talk about how Disney delivers customer service right? and all of that. And then, okay, so this is how Disney does it. Um, why is that important for your classroom as a teacher? How do you deliver customer service to your kids or to your colleagues? Yeah. And, you know, kind of like um, extend those lessons into their world. So I it, think that's pretty awesome. Fun. Yeah, I think yeah. that's really awesome. You know, I just read an article about Disney that they don't put um, mirrors over their sinks in the bathrooms. And the reason they do that, they put a mirror at the door and that keeps the flow moving. People won't stop. Yeah. And yeah, and I was like, but it's that kind of thing. There's so much to learn at Disney about every aspect of your classroom. And I think mm -hmm. it's really cool you guys do that, that you take them in and show them all these things, just like you did with your, the, the teacher from Britain that you were talking about. That, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I'll oh, go ahead. Uh, well, I, so I'm just curious, is that something that's currently in development, right? That's not available yet? Well, we're actually um, doing our first one now. Um, so we kind of are doing our first one. It's kind of like a little beta test. We have a small group. Sure. Uh -huh. um, and, and, but we're, we're hoping that once we get this one done, you know, to kind of go back and debrief ourselves and mm -hmm. make it better for next time. Yeah. So well, we, we, let, we, we definitely plan on. That. Yeah, yeah, we definitely want to do more of them down the road. Yeah, I, well, I, I mean, I, um, I, I would imagine that many of our listeners are chomping at the bit right now going, yeah. wait a minute, we get, <laughs> we, we get to learn online uh, about the, all of these different aspects <laughs> and then go to, Disney, go to Disney, not just to go to Disney and <laughs> yeah. have a great time, but to go to Disney and and actually see what they're right. learning put into practice. I mean, uh, that is, that's yeah. awesome. And get professional development points for it. Exactly. exactly. And that's the yeah. kicker. Yeah. Sorry, get PD for going to yeah. WD. I, I get to see the districts right now going, oh, wait, you're going to Disney World and I'm going Right. Yes. Oh yeah, I'm giving you PD eight hours for this. This That's is awesome. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. so very cool. So okay, I want to yeah. ask you a question then. So um, we're 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 getting close to time here, but let's do um, sure. your top three emerging innovations right now. What do you think they would be if you're going to give them out in a kind of a quick you know bullet points? What would be your top for, three for for our, um, for our listeners to look at in the classroom right now? Um, for education, definitely, I would say the first two that I spoke about would be um, augmented reality and, and artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a third one that's out there, and um, this one is a little bit different because it's not so much for educators, but it's more for the folks that work um I don't know if behind the scenes is the right term, but blockchain technology. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. I think it, um, be one of most people know blockchain from uh, cyber, like Bitcoin and, and cyber currency. Right. Um, cyber currencies are, you know, that um, just kind of like a, a small part of what blockchain technology is. And mm -hmm. without going too deep into it right now, blockchain basically is is the platform that allows the cyber currencies to work. But one of the things that's great about blockchain technology is that it allows you to build, let's just say websites or different platforms that are, are able to secure um, like student records, for example, um, grades, all that kind of a thing. And I think that there hasn't been a whole lot uh, focus yet. It's it's really when you talk about a new and emerging technology, blockchain is really still kind of like the wild west out there because yeah. it's it really is brand new. But I think if you ask me, I think there's tremendous potential for education yeah. of being able to build products using blockchain technology. Um, you know, to deliver um, assessments, to handle student records, all that kind of stuff. So, blockchain, AI, and uh, VR cool. would be or AR. Yeah, AR. My three. Oh, that's, Great. that's one of my right. favorite games is AR based. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Brian, if our listeners want to get in touch with you and find out more and steal your ideas and all that kind of good stuff <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and get you to, you know, to get to interact even yeah. more with you, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? 
So people want to find me. Uh, gosh, man, I like to be liked. I like to be followed. So uh, oh, yeah. I am all over social media. Um, my consulting website is called the Brainstorm Institute. And the website for that is brainstorm-institute.com. So okay. put that dash in there. Um, you can email me at brainstorm-institute.com. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, so please link, link up with me on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me actually on Facebook. I've also got a website or, or a, a page on Facebook called Educators Who Love Disney. And okay. I'd love to have as many of your listeners join us there. Um, it's a great way to, uh, you know, to see some kind of fun uh, educational content from a Disney perspective. So lots of different ways. That's really cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we'll make sure we include that uh, in our yeah. notes. We'll, we'll hashtag yeah. it and all that kind of yeah. good stuff and make sure it gets like out If there. we get off here, awesome. Jeff and I are going to jump on there. Yeah. So. <laughs> hey, cool. uh, Brian, thanks for coming on the show. Um, it's really good to hey. see you again. And uh, thanks for be, letting everybody know what you do and what's going on out there. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. You know, Student Treasures has been turning students into published authors for more than 20 years. They provide everything you need to turn your class into published authors for free. Publishing with Student Treasures is easy. Their free hands-on writing activity motivates your students to write and inspires them to learn by turning their writing and illustrations into a -a one-of-a-kind book. When you turn your students into published authors, you'll automatically receive a free teacher copy of your class's book along with any copies ordered by parents. Plus, their online bookmaker, Scripsy, is perfect for technology-based learning and makes it easy for your students to create your class book online. But don't take our word for it. More than 440,000 teachers have turned over 14 million students into published authors with Student Treasures. And you won't want to miss the looks on their faces when they see their work come to life in a professionally bound book. Learn more about publishing and turn your class into proud authors at studenttreasures.com slash Tech Guys, that's S-T-U-D-E-N-T-R-E-A-S-U-R-E-S dot com slash Tech Guys. Hi, I'm April Jackson with your EAST update. This week's update highlights EAST professional development opportunities through EU, Education Unleashed. EU is available to all educators at any school and from any grade level. These trainings cover grant writing tips, Google Basics and beyond, how to leverage social media in the classroom, and opportunities to connect with TechStart through Facebook's education initiative. If you're interested in customized and engaging professional development opportunities, follow us on social media at The East Initiative or visit our website at eastinitiative.org. This week's student composer is Beat by DJ Hubbard with their submission of I Want It All. Thanks, DJ Hubbard. I am April Jackson, and this has been your East Update. Hey, thank you guys so much from the East Initiative for providing the weekly updates that we get here uh, on each show. Every week. Yeah, it's so cool, man. I I love hearing what the students are doing with the East program. Doing with the East program. That's that's my new new thing. I'm just going to... You're mocking me, aren't you? I'm mocking you, aren't I? (laughs) (laughs) No, no, I'm not. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I'm like like the spoken word rap, rap artist. You know how they always say... You know, Baba Dim Dim Dim. Oh, oh, yeah, you're like, house in the house. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> so. I was just trying to, you know, put some little emphasis in there to, uh, to make the show even livelier uh, than it is. You're, you're my hollaback girl. It, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Color me blushing. So, yeah, anyway, that was, a, you know, want to thank East. Don't forget to visit them online, uh, social media, the whole bit, eastinitiative.org. Uh, 
Yeah. Hey, and if you hadn't had a chance, um, you can uh, jump out to uh, soundcloud.com slash edutechguys and check out a special bonus episode we put out where uh, we cut up uh, pieces of each of the interviews that we did with the students uh, at the East Con, and uh, you get to hear about all the different projects that those students are doing uh, through their East programs and schools. It is really, really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're out there, and you should take a listen. Those kids are doing some really cool stuff. You know, we recently celebrated the birth of the World Wide Web, so there has been a lot of talk lately about its origins, like how it was born out of higher ed as a way to share information. Mm -hmm. What I don't think anyone really saw back then was just how much being online and in the web was going to change everyday life, including and especially for higher ed. Yeah, it's funny, you know, a lot of websites are still very static, man. You know, Schools, they need more interaction through their websites, but you know that takes time and people and know-how where a lot of folks may not have that. Or you have like your educational web teams and technology educators, they've got too many priorities and they have to try to balance those things, trying to keep things updated and engaging on the site. But that's where Pantheon.io comes in. And that's right, they have a scalable web solution, whether someone is managing 10 sites or 1,000 sites. They have cool solutions that have central management and still let the school and their teachers customize things to fit their needs. Web teams and educators don't have to waste a bunch of time spinning up sites for departments or classes. Pantheon.io helps them take care of that quickly and easily using Drupal and WordPress. Yeah, but don't take our word for it, though. I mean, they've helped schools like Yale and ASU and Trinity College with their online presence. Now, the easiest way to get more information is to head over to pantheon.io slash edutechguys. Pantheon, the award-winning alternative to the traditional web hosts. Check them out. That's pantheon.io slash edutechguys. Hey, you know, it's been a great show, and we want to let you know that we are going to be some places physically, so you can visit us <laughs> coming up, and we'll, we're, we're still working on getting some of that uh, travel and everything put together, so as soon as we have it, just be sure you're following us on social media or check yeah. the website, and you'll find out where we're going to be live if you want to be in the audience and be part of the show. That's right. You want to jump in, grab the hot seat, or, you know, you'll find out... Actually, you'll probably find out before we even know where we're going. That's probably true. It'll probably be on social media before Jeff even knows it happened. That's right. I'll probably be there before it actually hits anywhere. That's right. So uh, thanks for coming to the show. We want to thank our sponsors uh, for sponsoring us. Yeah. We want to thank uh, Unsweet Naturally Brewed Tea for giving us the caffeine to lose our minds today. Well, we definitely want to thank Brian Collins for uh, taking some time out of his very busy schedule to uh, share with us some of his thoughts about uh, – AR, VR, and, and stuff coming down the line that he's got going on. Yeah, and you definitely want to check out his information, uh, and we'll be putting it on social media if you want to find out about going to Disney World, learning about education and, and innovation, and getting PD hours for it. I'm saying, man. Pretty awesome stuff. Sure. Hey, it's been a great show. I'm Jeff Madlock. I'm David Henderson. We'll catch you next time. You've been listening to The EduTech Guys edutechguys.com